Hey, Richard Miller here. Um, as you know, I'm with the blog Facts Working People, and uh, if this goes on YouTube and you happen to see it there, could you please, and you agree with it or you find it interesting, uh, could you please like it and share it? Um, that's, uh, it's not monetized, my channel. But anyway, um, what, what I wanted to comment on was I was watching something, or I was reading something the other day, and it was <clears throat> some nasty comment in Twitter or something, uh, uh, and it was about the crime in Chicago, that's what it was. And somebody was sarcastically saying about wonderful black culture and what they uh, brought, and, but it was a sarcastic racist tweet because of the crime conditions in Chicago, and there was something like 12 shot over the weekend. And I remember some time ago, a uh, a, well, it wasn't a friend of mine necessarily, but um, a person who I knew, <laughs> an acquaintance and um, was talking about working in the inner cities and really uh, uh, in, as a teacher and without even thinking who doesn't consider herself a racist or anything or question it but said to me or to the few people around the, the, that were there um, that she she couldn't uh, deal with black culture because this school is a pretty rough school and I, I, my, my, my comment was well that's not black culture. Obviously, you can go six blocks up, up there toward the hill where the middle class people with more money live, black folks, and uh, and uh, there's a different attitude there because there's, the conditions are different. And I said, well, and I've said it to others, if that's black culture, or when you see negative things and you want to complain about it being black culture, um, well, is dragging um, a, a white guy is dragging a black guy along a pickup truck till he he dies. Uh, you know, trying, tying him up and driving him along. Is that white culture? Is the clan white culture? Are those guys that, uh, that, that, that hunted down that guy and I forget his name, there's so many, uh, and down south they got jail time. Is that white culture? Of course not. It's the conditions are what determined uh, uh, behavior primarily. And I was thinking, because along the similar lines, when you look at country like Nigeria, I, I grew up there for three years as a small child. And if you take it, often you'll hear about these countries, Nigeria has tremendous wealth, potential wealth, and it has, a, it's one of the largest populations, I think it's the most populated country in Africa, great history and um, culture and everything else, and it's a basket case, and this is true, of course, with a lot of former colonial countries. And the thing is, is they always, in one way or another, no matter how guarded they are, in the mass media, the capitalist media, will try to... Um, portray, well, they're corrupt. Well, they, they're certainly not more corrupt than the country I'm living in here, the United States. Uh, uh, and they are corrupt. But the question is, why are so many of these countries a mess? And if you think of, uh, of Nigeria, and I'm just, I'm not going to give you a history of Nigeria. I've read a number of books on Nigeria of late. Um, but I'm talking to the average worker who really, geography is, particularly in this country, is pretty grim, and also history. But if you take the question of Nigeria, it was, it became a British, uh, 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 it, 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 well, Lagos and the surrounding area was a colony for a long time. And it became, the country itself, which has about 250 ethnicities in it, three major religions in it, with the influence of Europe and the Arabs as well from the east. Um, uh, and then you had the, the, the Niger River in the north. So prior to 1914, when it became a protectorate, the protectorate of Nigeria or whatever, um, the, the British were in competition with the French uh, uh, in, for trade in the Niger River. Uh, the, the Germans were in Cameroon uh, at some point. Um, the French and the Germans were scrambling for... for uh, for, for colonial uh, uh, um, possessions and the, of course the raw materials, the wealth that bring, brings, the British extracted tons of coal out of Africa and uh, any, out of uh, Nigeria and so forth. So what, what happened, uh, uh, it eventually became a, a country, an um, uh, official country, got independence from Britain in 1960. Of course it's not independent from the World Bank and the uh, <laughs> capital is, is still uh, 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 is controlled by the Western countries and so it's got a nominal independence in the sense that it's not occupied by British troops or anything but of course it, access to capital in any country is crucial you die without it and so but the main thing to think of when somebody s criticize it as there's something wrong with Nigerians or, or whatever is that what you have is a, a square box of about close to a million square miles I think 900,000 square miles 
with these 250 ethnicities in it, some major tribes and some minor tribes, all different cultures, and you have them now trapped in a box that the British created and called Nigeria, and the name Nigeria was given it, obviously the Niger River came into mind, by the first governor's wife, and that's how they got the name Nigeria. So you've got in Nigeria, these, the British crammed all these people and said to them, well, like, you're Nigerians now. And, of course, uh, 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 this has caused tremendous crisis. It did then. It's been ongoing. Then, there, of course, there were, over the periods from then to independence in 1960, there were massive struggles and, for, uh, and, and rebellions and struggles against, uh, uh, against colonial rule. And what's interesting, in the south, where I lived, um, in the Yoruba land, you know, it is Christian, predominantly Christian. In the north, because of the influence of the Arabs and uh, uh, traders and so forth, it's predominantly Muslim. And um, both actually destroyed the indigenous languages and religions to an extent, the, uh, the Muslims, uh, the Arab traders, and of course the British. And it's interesting that when Britain, uh, the British ab uh, um, uh, uh, abolished slavery in 1861 or 71 or 61, something like that, Never mind that British capitalism ran it for, 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 for a considerable amount of time, but they had to abolish slavery because capitalism cannot thrive with slave in a slave uh, uh, economy. The same in the in the United States, the struggle between the industrialists of the North and the slave owners of the South. Capitalism and um, uh, uh, has to have free labour, and so when the British abolished abolished it, it was still going on, and the British Navy would. Uh, capture slave vessels and free the slaves and put them in San, uh, send them to Sierra, Sierra Leone and one of them a guy named who became named Crowther uh, um, became a Christian was the, well, I think the, one of the first Anglican bishops he translated uh, uh, Yoruba into English and wrote uh, one of the first books about the Yoruba peoples uh, the, the missionaries had a, a interesting uh, uh, influence in the south but the point is and you, you, I'm just raising this basic fact, and hopefully some of my co-workers, co -workers, only working class folks that are interested in, in looking to the causes of things, as aside from blaming somebody's religion or somebody's colour or somebody's race, uh, to look at the social conditions and the historical context out of which it developed. When I first came to the United States, people would tell me why, you know, they'd ask me, why can't Catholics and Protestants get along? Well, in the village I was in, I was the only Catholic and nobody ever persecuted me. Northern Ireland was a political question. You don't, you don't kill each other over religion in that way. It was a political question and an economic question. And religion was used to divide people because they were all white. You couldn't divide, divide them on colour. No colonial power has ever not tried to divide people. I am sure Genghis Khan uh, uh, did, did the same thing in one way or another to the places he conquered. He would pick on or, 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 or uh, settle on a certain section of society that could be relied on. So the thing to think about when you look at Africa like that, and if you look at the north, you've got all those countries that are very angular. Well, those were all created from without. Unlike in Europe, where Germany and France and Britain, these uh, the capitalist class have struggled against the feudal aristocracy, and uh, that the the creation of the modern nation state was an organic process from within. In Af in the colonial countries, these states were, were were the boundaries were drawn from without, just like Iraq. Uh, the British and the French did in the 2000s and 1916, Kashmir, uh, Pakistan and East Pakistan, West Pakistan, now uh, Bangladesh and Pakistan were created by colonial powers in their interests. And so, so when you look at Nigeria and, and, and a country, particularly that country, you think of 200, uh, um, uh, 200 ethnic groups, 250 cultural peoples, now suddenly forced into this box and they're all Nigerians. And of course, that that that, um, that doesn't work. It quite has serious problems, and it, it 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 the same problem would have existed in Europe in the early on period. But it takes a long time or a certain period of time for national consciousness to develop. Like when uh, there were there were struggles going on in Angola, you know, and people people often say, well, why can't they just why can't they get along? Well, the problem is, if you take Nigeria, it's only been a nation for sixty years, right? It's only been the national the nationality of Nigeria has only existed for 60 years, so co national consciousness uh, uh, takes a long time to develop. The same here in the U.S., 
right? The civil, the 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 the, the, war, the revolutionary war was British people against British people, <laughs> or you know, uh, or Irish, if you include Irish and so forth. So so that's the real issue. But think of Nigeria when you look at it and look at that history. And there's a few books that are good at, that a friend to combo uh, uh, recommended to me. One of them is this one. It's a very good book. Uh, um, the, there's another one I brought out, but I don't know where it is. Oh, it's this one. This was quite good too. Uh, uh, this was quite interesting, and I learned a lot from it. And also another one I read, um, the Br the Brothers' War, which was about the Biafran War, the war between the uh, that was predominantly the Igbo seceding, or the Igbo as they're known, seceding uh, 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 from Nigeria. It was a horrific war, great brutality and so forth and the tragedy and the, if you look on my Facebook page and that, that African man who's showing us a, an albino girl, he's holding her arms, he was a man that took care of me, he died in that war according to my father's friend in Nigeria. Anyway, I just, like I say, this is not a PhD, uh, an, an, an academic exercise. It's just a very basic thing when you hear about, uh, uh, as a worker in this country, Argentina, whether, whether it's any of the colonial countries and why they're in such distress, you have to look at the conditions over the last two to three hundred years uh, uh, that, uh, that has caused this, uh, these crises. And so, I just wanted to say that anyway and I hope it's useful to people and I hope you check out those books. It's a great country for me and I'd love to go back there because I had my childhood there. Alright, anyway, Richard Meller, Facts for Working People.